Hey guys, Chris here, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to rebuild the torque tube out of a C5 Corvette, specifically my 2004 Z06. So I'll show you how to take it all apart. Uh, I'll show you how to replace the bearings and the couplers, the seals and the snap rings, and I'll show you how to put it all back together. So the best that I can tell, it's the original torque tube, original bearings and couplers and all that stuff. This might be pretty interesting because this is 124,000 miles on this. So it'd be really interesting to see what it is. But first thing I got to do is get this. There's a gigantic snap ring in here that I need to get off. You see it there. It goes around this whole, whole outer ring here. The uh, snap ring pliers I have are not big enough. So I just went and got this double hinged uh, needle nose pliers here. And I'm going to see if that'll work. Um, so I saw some stuff on the Corvette forums that said that this will work. I might have to cut the tips down, but. Ah, oh, man, I almost had it out that time. So what I did was I took my pliers here and I don't know if you can see this or not, but what I did was I just ground down the tips with a Dremel to get them to be more uh, more straight, like you would have an actual pair of snap ring pliers. And it's, I mean, it's just about to come out. I think part of the problem is it's just been stuck in here forever, probably. As far as I could tell, this snap ring's been in here for 17 years. So I'm gonna try spraying some stuff and lubricating it. Maybe that'll help uh, break it free a little bit. Again, this shows how I've modified these. If it doesn't show up well, I'll uh, insert a picture. Yes! <laughs> there is the gigantic ass snap ring. Um, that thing, pretty big. Next, I'm going to take the old slave cylinder off. Looks like it's only held in by two 10 millimeter bolts. So, so this is the bleed screw. This is what I originally started this whole project with. You can see that right there, that's the shifter. So that's the shifter inside of the car. So that gives you a point of reference as to where this bleed screw is. It's basically right behind the radio in the car, meaning it's impossible to bleed this clutch without taking the whole thing apart. But now I'm gonna take the slave cylinder out. I'm gonna replace this, because as far as I could tell, it's the original one. All this stuff seems to be original as far as I can tell. There's no records or anything of it ever being taken apart. So I will uh, be putting a new one on as part of my driveline uh, refresh. And there's the old one. Slides off. Now I just need to hammer this out, I believe. The good thing is this uh, input shaft here looks really good. I don't see any... Um, any damage to it at all really it's a little rusty but other than that i think now if i just get a rubber mallet and just lightly tap on this the whole thing will come out oh yep seems to be free now there it is There's the inside of the torque tube. So, as part of the rebuild, there's a bearing there, there's rubber coupling, and another rubber, cup, rubber coupling, and then there should be a couple bearings in there. Yeah, it actually doesn't look that bad. I was expecting it to be all cracked and everything, but a little surprised. I've heard that these things these rubber things crack really bad, but this uh, doesn't doesn't look bad at all. I mean, I'm still gonna replace it because I have no idea how old it is, but 
honestly it doesn't look that bad. Today I'm going to start taking apart the drive shaft um, so that I can replace the couplers and the bearings and also the seals and stuff. Um, so the first step before I take the couplers off here, uh, I've gone through and I've marked. You see it, I put a mark here and I put a mark there so that when I take it apart and put it back together it's going to be in the same position. I've also did the to, did it to this side also, marked here and I marked there. That way, this piece here and the drive shaft line back up in the same orientation. Um, I guess it's I guess it's important to do that so that you don't throw off the balance of the drive shaft. So the drive shaft's in pretty good condition. The only thing I saw, see is if you look inside the tube over there. There's a little bit of ground up plastic, which this piece here in the center, and I'm not really sure what this piece does, but I don't know, you can see it's smooth here and then it's ground on part of it. So it is kind of uh, rubbing a little bit in there, just a little bit. That seems like that's where the, the ground up plastic's coming from, a ground up rubber, because these couplers look like they're in really good shape. It looks like it's this is what it's wearing. So I'm going to have to do some reading and figure out uh, what that means and if that's a problem or not. But all right, I tried to just loosen these um, by just having it in a vise and turning it. Uh, that didn't work. I snapped off a socket really easily. I also had the wrong kind of socket. Um, I just had this really cheap one from Menards and it broke pretty much as soon as I put any force on it, um, it went ahead and broke. So I went to Lowe's and got a better one. Um, this one that I had that didn't work was a, some, a tamper proof one that had a hole in the bottom of it. So that didn't work. This one I've got now is a solid one. So hopefully it works a lot better. Um, I've also went out and got a uh, propane torch, which I've actually don't never had before, but now I have one. Um, and I read that if you heat these up and you, because these are Loctited in here really, there's a ton of Loctite on these. So if you heat them up and kind of dissolve the Loctite, they should come out a lot easier. Um, I saw that on the Corvette forum. And since, I, since I'm gonna replace these couplers, it should be no problem to just heat them up and dissolve the Loctite. And then that should make the bolts come out a lot easier because before, um, they, I mean, they just, I didn't get very far because I broke the socket, but they did not seem like they were going to come out easy. So I'm going to try heating them and I'm going to use this new one I got. Uh, it's a T50, uh, what is it? T50 and then it's a six point uh, star socket. So I'm going to try that with heating and see if that works better. Just be careful with this because you are heating around rubber, so it will catch it on fire pretty easily. But I'm just lightly going back and forth, trying to heat up the end of the bolt here, which is where the Loctite is. That's free. I will tell you that is significantly easier. Um, if you use this propane torch to heat this Loctite up, I'm pretty sure you could use a super cheap socket like this one from Menards that was $1.97 or Harbor Freight or whatever. Another tip when you do this, put it when you put it in the vise, put your rubber coupler in the vise. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about damaging the aluminum drive shaft um, and also have the end of it here supported um, so that this snubber doesn't isn't taking the brunt of the weight so let's go ahead and rotate this
do not get a socket like this that has got a tamper proof hole in it or whatever. Make sure you get one of these solid ones. Um, and I've read some stuff on the Corvette forum that said get a really good socket, like a snap-on socket. Uh, but I looked at those and they were like 50 bucks. This one was $5 at Lowe's and then the propane torch was like $25. So it's way cheaper to do this compared to buying some snap-on shit. So that's the three on this side. Get this one out, and then I should be able to pull this front uh, front shaft part of it off once I get this bolt out. I said it earlier, but before you take these out, make sure you mark the orientation of the drive shaft to the uh, spline shaft in the end. Uh, so that the balance doesn't get thrown off when you put it back together. Okay. Okay, so here's the shaft. And then when you take the shaft off, there's this um, little uh, bearing thing here. Um, so... That goes on the end of this, like so. I'm just gonna leave that here for now. So there's one end of the drive shaft apart. And then this end is where, so this is the bearing, one of the bearings, one of three bearings I have to replace. That's gonna go to the machine shop to get replaced, but I think I have to take these other couplers off, these other three bolts out first. But if you look at these, I was expecting these to be like destroyed based on other pictures and stuff I'd seen, but honestly, these look like brand new basically, which is strange because as far as I could tell, based on the service records that I got with the car and everything that I, you know, it doesn't look like the transmission or the torque tube or anything's ever been out of the car. Like there's no record of any of this stuff ever being replaced. Uh, there's no record of the clutch ever being changed. So I find it really hard to believe that these look like they're in such good condition. Uh, but I also find it hard to believe that a bunch of major work was done to the car and there's no service records. Because, I mean, there's service records for a new battery and a new tire and stuff like that. But then there's no service records for a clutch and torque tube rebuild. So... I don't know. Maybe these things last a really long time if you don't, if you take care of the car. So, but I'm going to replace them just because I'm going to assume they're old and they're going to fail immediately. Uh, so it's, it's a really good idea to change these out whenever you have the torque tube apart anyways, because it's, it's so much work to take all this apart. Why would you go through the work of taking something apart and then not doing every preventative maintenance thing you can do. So I'm gonna get these last three out. Here's a better look at this thing here. This just sits on like this. The wider part of it just sits on like that. I guess it's like some kind of a, I don't know, plastic bearing or whatever, but it looks like it's in good shape. All right, so I'm gonna come over and work on this side here. Take the last three bolts out. Um, cause this, this piece with the, the bearing on it has to go to the machine shop. Well, since I wouldn't be replacing these bolts, the new bolts are actually a T55 star socket head and not a T50. Um, I guess GM upgraded them at some point, probably because a bunch of people broke T50s. Uh, so by going to T55, it's T55 is a lot bigger of a socket, probably less likely to break them. Okay, I'm gonna work on the other side here. Um, got it in the vise again. Got the end supported with a block of wood so the snubber is not touching the table or anything. Um, now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna heat it and start pulling them off. Out. 
this uh, third bolt here, which is the last thing holding the end of it onto the drive shaft, um, it kept spinning in the vise. So what I had to do was take a file and stick it in the bottom of the vise just to give it something with a rougher surface to grab onto. This end should just come out. Yep, there it goes. So that end is off now. And then the two bearings that I have to replace are inside of this thing. So I will have to take this apart further to get the bearings out, but. Okay, I have the input shaft and the output hub back uh, from the machine shop. So I had new bearing put on here, uh, two new bearings going here, new snap rings, uh, and there's two rubber seals that go in here. And then this, uh, uh, whatever this, I forget what this piece is called, this metal piece here. But I wasn't able to video um, taking these apart and replacing the bearings and stuff. But I have some pictures that I'll include now and I'll show you what it looks like when it's apart and what bearings they are and what snap rings and stuff have to be done. But Okay, I have some pictures here. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of replacing the bearings and stuff on the input shaft and the output hub. So the first thing, we'll start with the input shaft. The first thing you have to do is remove the slinger, which I'm in the picture is where the orange arrow is pointing to. Um, I think that thing just prevents oil and debris and stuff from getting into the bearing. So all you do is take a screwdriver and pry it off. Um, I found that it helps if you take a propane torch and you heat it up and then you pry it with a screwdriver and it'll pop right off. Next thing, you gotta remove a snap ring, which is shown here by the red arrow. And then you have to press the bearing off. You can either use a shop press or what I did was just put it in a vise and I heated up the bearing a little bit and I took a hammer and a punch and I just hit it off with a hammer and a punch. Um, you know, either way, it's pretty easy to get off. Clean it up. You press on the new bearing, which is shown with the green arrow. You install the snap ring back in place, and then you install a new slinger back over where the old one is. And that's it, you're done with the input shaft. We go to the output hub here. First thing you gotta do on this face here where the spline section is, there are two snap rings you have to remove. The, they're shown by the two red arrows. There's a smaller one, which goes around the outside of the spline section. And then there's a larger one, which goes on the outside of the aluminum housing. So you take those two off and then you press out the, and then you press the shaft out of the housing. And then the shaft that you're pressing out is shown with the green arrow. Next, this is what it looks like when you take the shaft out of the housing. There are two more snap rings to remove, which are shown by the red arrows. Uh, once those are removed, you then go ahead and press the bearing off, which is shown with the green arrow. And then I also put on here, the blue arrow is pointing to the groove where the snap ring from the pre previous picture was. So that snap ring you took off in the last step, that blue arrow shows where it would be. So in total on this shaft, there's three snap rings, which are all the same size, and then there's the bearing. You might also have to clean this up uh, because between this blue arrow and the topmost red arrow, there was a good amount of rust, so I had to clean that up. You press on the new bearing, and then you install two new snap rings. You can reuse the old ones, but I went ahead and just replaced them. Um, they get pretty stretched out when you take them off, so it's a good idea to just replace them. It's not much money. After that's done, you go back to the aluminum housing, and there is another bearing in there. So you press that bearing out. I don't, yeah, I don't really have a good picture of it, but this green arrow is pointing to that bearing that you have to press out. Once that second bearing is out, um, there's two rubber seals in here. Go ahead and remove those. Clean this up really well. There's also, in between the two rubber seals, there's this like, like I don't know what it is, like a spring, like a wave washer or something. I didn't do anything with that. I just left it in there. Um, Oh, but anyways, so clean it all up really well. Put two new seals back in the locations where you removed the old ones. And then you could go ahead and press in the new bearing 
um, which goes in the housing here. So the last step here is you take your shaft, which already has the new bearing and the new snap rings on it, and then you take the housing, which are, you just put a new bearing in, and then you press the housing back onto the shaft, and then you reinstall the two snap rings which go on the end of this assembly with the spline section. So the smaller one goes around the OD of the shaft, and then the larger one goes around the inner diameter of the aluminum housing. Um, I replaced the smaller one that goes around the shaft because it got pretty stretched out, but the larger one that goes into the aluminum housing, um, I did not replace that one, I reused that one. These are both done and ready to go. So now I'm going to get the new couplers out and attach them back to the drive shaft. I read something the other day that said, there's actually two different versions of these. There's a 10 millimeter version and a 12 millimeter version. The 10 millimeter version, I guess, is the earlier C5s. And then the 12 millimeter version is the later C5s. So if we look at this here, these bolt holes are 12 millimeters. So if you ever see that 10 millimeter versus 12 millimeter couplers, the difference is the diameter of these bolt holes here. And I was reading something somebody wrote that basically said the 12 millimeter couplers are way more durable than the earlier 10 millimeter couplers. So I've seen some pictures of some really, really bad ones. These have been in the car for, I have no idea how long. I'm assuming a long time and a lot of miles, but they look, really good. I don't see any signs of cracks or anything. So now these new ones, I have new bolts, new couplers. Everything is original GM. So these are the couplers. Genuine GM 88894026 made in Germany. Actually made in the Federal Republic of Germany. That's kind of weird. But anyways, I'm not, there's aftermarket ones, but I've read some things that say the aftermarket ones aren't that good. So you're better off just sticking with GM replacements. And then here's one of the bolts I got. Um, it's kind of expensive to replace the bolts. This is like 70 something dollars. But the nice thing about these bolts is that the star socket is a bigger size. So the ones I took off were a T50. These are a T55. So a larger star socket means you should be much less likely to break sockets. Um, so I guess that's a nice upgrade. And these already come, these already come with Loctite on them. See the arrow there? The arrow needs to point towards the flange. Arrow is pointing towards the flange that it threads into. So here's what they look like side by side. On the left is the old coupler and on the right is the new coupler. The old ones don't really look bad at all. I'm just replacing them just because I don't know the age, but I have these three in here now pretty good. It's time to torque them. Uh, Cause this is a manual transmission. They get torqued to 66 foot pounds. So I'm gonna start at a lighter torque. I'm probably gonna start at like 30 and then work my way up 30 foot pounds. Thirty foot pounds, forty. That's forty foot pounds, fifty. All right, we'll do sixty now. That's sixty, and then we'll go to sixty six. So that should be 66 foot pounds. Arrow is pointing towards the flange. All right, now these have, to, this has to go back together in a certain orientation. You can see my picture there of how I took it apart. So I marked the tube here, the drive shaft, which is right there. And then I marked the end of the coupler, which is right there. And you can see that bolt and the arrow there. So that's how this has got to go back together. So we will just line it up mark to mark and put it in there. 
blue mark, blue mark, and arrow. So exactly how it was before. Start threading the new bolts in. As you can see too, you got to do, you have to attach the coupler to the drive shaft first. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to get at these bolt heads with the output hub on the on the shaft. So you got to do it the way I showed you. Attach the coupler to the drive shaft and then put the out, output hub on and then attach the bolts that way. Now I'm ready to start torquing them. This side is going to take a little longer because the way it is in the vise, I'm going to have to loosen it and move it a couple times to get it. But We'll do the same thing. We'll do 30, 40, 50, 60, then 66. 40. Now we will go 66. So that side is done. Now we can move on to the other side. Tighten these down and the same as the other side. Tighten them, torque them. Okay, time to torque these now. Same thing as the other side. I'm going to do 30, then 40 foot pounds, then 50, 60, and finally 66 foot pounds. That side's done. Now let's put the input shaft on. Okay, we have the input shaft with the new bearing on it. Um, so same thing, we have to line it up. Don't forget this Teflon bushing that needs to be there. So we have our orientation mark. Here's our other orientation mark. So both orientation marks, slip this on. And then we just need to thread the new bolts in. Okay, I've got the bolts in for the input shaft. I'm just starting to tighten them down now, and then I'll go ahead and torque them. I'm torquing down the last three bolts now. I just did 30 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna go through and do 40. Sixty thing here going to sixty six foot pounds. Okay, that bolt's done. Okay, there it is. There's the completed torque tube. Uh, let's see, so new couplers on both sides, two new bearings here, new snap rings, new seals, and then this side, new coupler, new bearing, and new uh, splash guard or whatever this, this piece is. And then the only really part that I saw wear on this was this uh, rubber or this plastic piece in the middle. So I guess it's called a snubber, um, and its only purpose is to prevent the drive shaft from getting permanently warped if you over rev the car. So I have a little bit of wear on it, but really not that bad at all. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. But in any case, now the drive shaft is back together. The next step is to put the drive shaft back into the actual tube. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. Come down here, you can see there's some plastic uh, shavings and stuff. And that's just from that snubber in the center. So I'm just gonna wipe that all down and just clean it up a little bit. Okay, so here's a seal we have to replace. This right here, this is where the input shaft bearing goes. So there's a rubber rubber o-ring right there so we just got to replace that i had one left over i didn't know where it went but i found it now so 
Just gonna clean up that, put the new seal in, and then we can put the drive shaft. And I think it just needs a light little tap with a rubber mallet to push it the rest of the way in. That's going in. That's just has to go in far enough that we can get the snap ring in. That sounds like it's in all the way now. Alright, we've got the monster snap ring now. This is like the last step. So hopefully it goes in easier than it came out because it was not uh, not easy to get out. It should be easier, I think. To I just need a screwdriver. Nice. I think that's it. So there you go. That snap ring is now in place. That gigantic snap ring. It wasn't, I guess it wasn't that bad to get in, but that is it. The torque tube is now done. It's now completely rebuilt. Feels really good and solid. To be honest, it felt fine before, but at least now I know the age of the couplers and the bearings and all that kind of stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video and you think it was good, go ahead and physically hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Thanks. See you soon.